Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they had heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground, he has no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet... It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him, that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is from Hebrews chapters 4 and 5. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. 
Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross and so remove us from the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Let us continue uh, as we begin the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ with the hymn 454. Sing my tongue the glorious battle. 454. My tongue, the glorious battle, sing the ending of the fray. Now above the cross, the trophy, sound the loud triumphant lay. Tell how Christ, the world's Redeemer, as a victim won the day. Tell how when at length the fullness of the appointed time was come, He, the Word, was born of woman, left for us His Father's home. Blaze the path of true obedience, shown as light amidst the gloom. Thus with thirty years accomplished, he went forth from Nazareth, destined, dedicated, willing, did his work and met his death. Like a lamb he humbly yielded on the cross his dying breath. Faithful cross, true sign of triumph, be for all the noblest tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thine equal be. Symbol of the world's redemption for the weight that hung on thee. Unto God be praise and glory, to the Father and the Son, to the eternal Spirit, honor, now and evermore be done. Praise and glory in the highest, while the timeless sages run. as we begin with the readings of the Passion, have uh, hymn number 450 uh, prepared as we sing after each reading, stanza by stanza, one by one. 450, O sacred head now wounded. Let us begin with the readings.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. The betrayal and the arrest of Jesus. John 18, verses 1 to 11. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? now wounded with grief and shame way down now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown O sacred head what glory what bliss till now was thine Yet thou despised and gory, I joy to call thee mine. Jesus before the high priest and the denial of Peter. St. John 18, verses 12 to 27. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, 
bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. O sacred head, what glory hath robbed thee of thy life. Thus thou hast lost thy vigor, thy strength in this sad strife. Jesus before Pilate, St. John 18, verses 28 to 40. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests had delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would not have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered Was all for sinners' gain Mine, mine was the transgression But thine the deadly pain Lo, here I fall, my Savior Tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor and grant to me thy grace. Jesus. 
Jesus prepared for crucifixion. St. John chapter 19, verses 1 to 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. My shepherd now receive me, my guardian own me thine. Great blessings Thou didst give me. O source of gifts divine, Thy lips have often fed me With words of truth and love. Thy Spirit oft hath led me to heavenly joys above. Please rise as you're able. The crucifixion of Jesus, St. John chapter 19, verses 16 to 24. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for this place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, 
but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow? Thy pity without end, O oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be? Lord, let me never, never outlive my love for Thee. Jesus' mother and his death, St. John 19, 25 to 30. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. My Savior, be thou near me When death is at my door Then let thy presence cheer me Forsake me nevermore When soul and body languish O oh, leave me not alone, but take away mine anguish by virtue of thine own. Jesus' side is pierced, St. John 19, 31 to 42. Since it was the day of preparation and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. 
He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture must or might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Be thou my consolation, my shield when I must die. Remind me of thy passion when my, my last hour draws I, Mine eye shall then behold thee upon thy cross shall dwell my heart by faith enfold thee who dieth thus does well The sermon for this Good Friday is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18 and 19. The sermon is entitled, The Good Week. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This will be the most dangerous week for our country, a phrase I heard on the local news earlier this week as they were discussing the predictions of the apex of the COVID virus. A crisis is at hand, they said. Danger is at hand, they said. As I was sitting there on the couch, Yes, the pastor button immediately was engaged. And yes, the kids, their synchronized eyes rolled together. And I asked them, is this the most dangerous week for our country? And yes, of course, we can never neglect the reality of this global crisis, this pandemic. There is much danger and much uh, possible danger for the physical body, much strife and suffering for those who are actually enduring this virus as we speak, even though sadly mourning the loss of those who had already died of this virus is no such a serious matter. 
and those on the front lines, the, the medical doctors, the first responders, the grocers, the retail workers, all that are out there dutifully and courageously in harm's way for the sake of neighbor. We very well know that this is a dangerous time. But yet, as I heard the phrase, this will be the most dangerous week for our country, I took a pause for a moment there and I asked myself, is this week truly the most dangerous week for us all? Because we know what this week is. That's why you, you are listening. That this is the week of all weeks. The most precious week of the year. The most graceful and faithful enduring weeks for the sake of all of humanity. Holy Week. Good Friday. It is during this week that we dwell upon the most debilitating danger in our lives. Because truly it is a dangerous reality. We must ask on this Good Friday, why did Jesus go to his own death willingly for you? Why would he do such things? Because bigger than any catastrophe, any disaster, the most dangerous thing is the reason why Jesus came to this world. It's the main reason why he went to the cross, namely, for our sin. Sin, three-letter word, so small, even to the point of insignificance. Some may say, why is sin so dangerous? I'm not so bad, I'm good with God. I've done good in my life. I give to charity, I take care of neighbor. I am benevolent by nature. Others may say, well, I try my best not to sin. I think because of it, I'm not a sinner. Actually, I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. But friends who are listening right now, the greatest danger is found in our flesh. It's found in our Isaiah 53 reading this evening. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone to their own way. This is who we are. Born into sin, the fall in the garden, from the serpent to the tree to the turn to the fall where there's sin and death. Sin and death came into the world. And there by nature we are spiritually blind and dead. This is the great disease. Sin and the separation from God. And there follows also death. The dangerous thing about sin is that we cannot deal with it ourselves. There is no negotiation available where we bring out the spiritual scale of, of good versus bad, where if we tip the scale to the good side, well, I guess that means we'll be saved. No, sin is far more destructive than that. For the consequence of sin is eternal, eternal death and condemnation. We are dead in our trespasses, the Bible says. No one is righteous, not even one, says the Bible. Without God, without his word, without Jesus, there is no hope within this condition that has befallen us. Yes, we can make justifications. We can convince ourselves that we are good. We can argue that it's not so bad as it seems. 
Why does Pastor have to be such a downer about this? But we know how sheepish we are. That's why we have this day. Because we have turned away. So easily are we led astray by the words and the philosophies of this world where sin is downgraded, even paraded at times as if it's a non-issue, that we simply live the way we want. That's why we have this day. Every me-centered sin, selfishness, covetousness, lustfulness, greediness, the idols as we worship ourselves, all these idols beautifully set before us as they run rampant, in each and every one of our lives. That is why we have this day. The devil, yes, he takes much credit for this, as he is sneaky yet ferocious he is, as a roaring lion, as one who is aiming to twist and turn the word of God. That is why we have this day. And on this Good Friday, we must ask, is this the most dangerous week for all the world? For Christ, and only Christ, it surely was. He's the only one who can step into danger for the sake of the world and for you. He stepped in because only his feet could go to the cross. We put Jesus on the cross, our sin and every evil. And there he took the dangerous road for us. Never shying away. Never doubting. Jesus went straight on this dangerous road. The eternal plague of sin and death, this road he took for you. And full of danger it was. This road filled with pain and suffering The fiery wrath of God was this road. The excruciating punishment was this road. The sins of the world on his shoulders was this road. The only road that he could take for the sins of the world. No one could trod successfully on this road except the Christ. Oppressed he was for you. Afflicted he was for you. And in all this, Not a word did Jesus say. He did not open his mouth. All for you. The Christ, our Savior, is the one true lamb who was sent to the slaughter. And how did he go? Silently, like a sheep that was before its shears. I suppose Jesus could have been like any other sheep before it cheers. He could have became riled up and upset. He could have just said, you know what? This isn't worth it. I want to save my own life. That's what he could have said. He could have said, the world hates me. The world doesn't deserve it. They betray me. They turn from me. They would rather have Barabbas. They don't deserve my sacrifice. No. Jesus says not a word. Because he's the faithful lamb who saw his own upcoming slaughter. Who knew what was to come as he predicted and foresaw his own fiery death. The very reason why he came to this world was for this time. He turned to the cross. He doesn't turn away. 
He turns to take on the cup of wrath. He goes to the front line for all of humanity, sacrificing his own life, standing in the face of danger, the truest danger for each and every one of you, the Christs. Taking the punishment for something he did not deserve. The penalty for our sin. The body and his blood shed for us. Yes, he saw the danger all the way. He knew the agony that was to come. He had many outs, didn't he? Yet obediently he entered the battle. As it reads in our hymn earlier in 454, he blazed the path of true obedience, shone his light amidst the gloom. Like a lamb he humbled, yielded on the cross his dying for the weight that hung on thee. The greatest, catastrophe, the greatest catastrophe, my friends, is to be a sinner without a Savior. The greatest terror is to live without the assurance and hope of only Christ. The greatest danger is not having the answer for eternal death and the separation from God. But Jesus lived his life this week to humbly strive in on a donkey to answer the hosannas that was above and beyond the crowd's expectation that yes indeed Jesus saves crisis no longer danger averted all by his gracious and most merciful kingly work that by his authority as the true king he stooped so low Suffering on the cross, nails in, on hands and feet, the crown of thorns, the bloodied pain from the crucifixion, not deserving at all, no guilt in Jesus at all. I find no guilt in him, Pilate said, because he is perfect. So perfect that he could be your sacrifice. And he is the good shepherd as he laid his life down for you. Stepping into that danger, the greatest and most destructive danger. And the only way that it could be done was by his very own death, as he died the big death for you. Yes, we can try our best to walk the eggshell-like path, hoping that we have done enough. But friends... This road will only end in disappointment. This road will only end with great terror and gloom. Because this dangerous road was only for Jesus to take upon himself. Every step, every breath, Every question as he heard the scoffing, as he was accused and interrogated, every excruciating moment as the God-man Jesus Christ, he went. His faithfulness, his perfect obedience on full display, giving you the lasting and greatest victory. As it give you those words, it is finished. Crisis no longer danger averted. The remedy has been delivered, the cure outpoured unto all the world. Jesus, as he stood in danger's way, dying to death that gives you life. And through his path, we reside on those words. It is finished. The work is complete for you. By his work, the promise is fulfilled. The devil is crushed, sins forgiven. Jesus, for you, as he washes them all away. 
So is this the most dangerous week? Absolutely not. For this is the most glorious week that turned the world upside down. That even through all the afflictions, all the chaos, all the worries and uncertainty, it is our Lord Jesus Christ who brings you peace, who delivers you the remedy, the cure to the most destructive disease that ails all of humanity. A good week it is in the treachery of the cross, a danger to all the world it seems. Remember, Christ bought you. Christ redeemed you. Christ forgives you of all of your sins. Indeed, crisis no longer, danger averted. Good Friday, it is. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Christian church that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy so that your church spread throughout all the nations may be defended against the adversary and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly save, serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of men and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially Donald, our president, the Congress of the United States, uh, Newsom, Gavin Newsom, our governor, and all those who make and administer and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, protect us during the pandemic, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant, grant health to the sick and safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you and graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Lord, this night uh, we continue to pray uh, for uh, Perla, we continue to pray that you may give her uh, continued, continued uh, improvement of health in the hospital and that you may bless her to a complete recovery. We also pray continually for the Ramos family, uh, for those who are situated in Japan and, and, and in the Philippines. Bless the family and lead them in good health in this time of insp instability. <clears throat> Lord, we also pray 
for Jay and Lisa, for Jay as he is uh, receiving his transplant today, bless him in a good surgery and, and lead him, O oh Lord, um, in his recovery. Uh, bless the family along with Susan and Frosty and grant them the comfort and peace in your will. Lord, for all these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying in one voice the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us continue with hymn 451, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted. Is the Christ by man rejected? Yes, my soul, tis he, tis he. Tis the long expected prophet, David's son, yet David's Lord. Proofs I see sufficient of it, tis the true and faithful word. Tell me ye who hear him groaning, was there ever grief like his? Friends through fear his cause disowning, foes insulting his distress. Many hands will raise to wound him, none would intervene to save. But the deepest stroke that pierced him was the stroke that justice gave. Ye who think of sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, here may view its nature rightly, here its guilt may estimate. Mark the sacrifice appointed, see who bears the awful load. Tis the word, the Lord's anointed, Son of man and Son of God. Here we have a firm foundation, here the refuge of the Christ, the rock of our salvation, is the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrifice to cancel guilt. None shall ever be confounded who on him their hope have built.
Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there? when they nailed him to the tree. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? 